I've just checked, and the FG-42 is still my most used weapon in Battlefield 5, even after not using it for three months because of the TTK changes. They just made it so bad that you'd be better throwing the whole gun at the enemy instead. It probably would have done more damage. It's still beating out guns like the STG, which is a gun I use a lot of the time, the M2 Carbine, which I used pretty much solidly for two weeks when Solomon Islands released, the BAR, I really like that gun as well, and even some of the SMGs like the Tommy Gun, which is pretty much my main medic weapon. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am happy to announce that the FG-42 is back in business with this update. It's basically been reborn from the ashes, and... It feels just lovely to use again. With the update, the FG-42 has basically been brought right back to the position that it was in with update 5.0, but it has had a couple of tweaks applied to it that make it perform slightly differently at mid to long range. Now, the first tweak is that it will take you an extra bullet to kill players at longer range compared to update 5.0. The FG-42 is now a 4-7 to seven bullet to kill weapon, previously it was a 4-6 to six bullet to kill weapon, and once you pass the 75 meter mark, that's where you're going to need that extra 7th bullet. Now in my experience so far today, and I have been playing Battlefield 5 pretty much since the update went live, it's not really come into play that much, that 7th bullet, unless I've purposely tried to kill a prone player or somebody who's really, really far away from me, and most of the time I'm then switching the weapon over to semi-automatic fire. That's where I noticed that it was taking more shots than I anticipated to kill somebody, and that's likely because the damage curve of the FG-42 is now just slightly different to what it was in update 5.0, and that is the other major factor between 5.0 and 6.2 versions of the FG-42. In update 5.0, when the FG-42 was a 4-6 to six bullet to kill gun, the 4 bullet to kill range, that was out to 10 meters. After that, up to 50 meters, you needed 5 bullets to kill, so there's quite a big window there where you only needed 5 bullets to kill somebody. Then between 50 and 75 meters, the damage dropped off to 6 bullets to kill, and that's after the 75 meter point, you absolutely needed that 6th bullet. Now, in update 6.2, the FG-42 drops off some damage a little bit earlier than it did before. It's got the same 4 bullet to kill range out to 10 meters, so that means it's still pretty lethal in close quarters. The 5 bullet to kill range though, that now stops at 30 meters, not 50 meters, which means at mid-range the FG-42 has lost a little bit of its power. And then between 40 and 75 meters, you're going to need 6 bullets to kill. And then after 75 meters, that's where you're going to need that seventh bullet. These changes do mean that the FG-42 is now slightly less of a monster compared to its 5.0 state, but in my experience so far, I haven't really noticed the bullet to kill differences apart from those longer range combat scenarios, where most of the time anyway, I'm not actually expecting to kill anybody with the FG-42. It still feels like an extremely competent and an extremely fun weapon to use. Now, the added recoil that DICE has reintroduced with this patch as well, that has certainly brought back more challenge to the FG-42. It is more difficult to control now. And as really just a personal challenge to myself, I've been trying to move away from using red dot sights in Battlefield 5. I've been trying to use the weapons without the easy-to-use optics. And now trying to do that with the FG-42 using those iron sights, it is much harder than it was before the update. The recoil really kicks up when you engage fully automatic fire, and anything outside, I'd say, maybe 30 meters or so, you're gonna notice the gun kick up and kick off of targets as well. So that's where a bit of bursting control is needed to keep the weapon steady. This kind of mimics the behavior of the weapon in update 5.0. You still needed to control the weapon in longer range gunfights, but now, due to that slightly reduced damage at mid-range and long-range, you are going to need to keep the weapon on target just a fraction longer before you land that killing shot. Now, you will, of course, notice that I'm not actually using the iron sights of the FG-42 here. 
the recoil was severe enough that I actually moved away from the iron sights because they really aren't very good with the FG42. They are, frankly, quite rubbish. So I kind of failed a little bit and I moved over to the AA sights, which I guess is still better than using a red dot sight if I'm going to stick with my challenge. And that did give me a clearer view, but obviously it doesn't give you the exact clear view that you get with a red dot sight. And once I made that switch, I was able to land more shots on target with better visibility. The whole package of the FG42, the high rate of fire, the high damage, the high recoil and the low ammo count, that to me straight off the bat just sounds like a really challenging weapon to use. You have to balance the amount of ammunition that you've got in your magazine with the targets in front of you. You can hit zero bullets very quickly with the FG42 because it fires so fast. I always found it particularly satisfying in the past with update 5.0 and all the time that I spent playing Battlefield 5 before everything changed that if I managed to land two kills per magazine with the FG42 that that would be really satisfying as a gameplay moment because you're quite likely to miss a few shots they won't always land on target and because this gun fires so fast two or three bullets can have left the gun before you even realize and then you start to correct your aim so that sort of feeling where you get two kills per magazine and it feels pretty awesome that feeling came back today when i was using the fg42 it felt like an achievement to use the gun in that way and get two kills per magazine so i was kind of going against the way you should use the weapon but that was a challenge for me and it felt good when i succeeded so like i said the fg42 is back and in my opinion it's just as good as it was before now, besides the updated weapons, I will be making more videos over the next couple of weeks with my opinions on lots of different weapons that have now changed in Battlefield 5. I do want to talk about a few other things in Update 6.2 that are worth mentioning to you today because some of these things weren't known before the update went out. So they kind of just got announced when the update went live as opposed to being included in the patch notes. First of all, DICE has taken the decision to enable Tides of War progression in the community game servers. Apparently, they heard the feedback from when the feature launched that players would really like to create their own map and mode rotations so they can complete the weekly challenges in game modes and on maps that they want to play instead of using the highlighted playlist or game mode or whatever. They could create their own and they could do those unlocks there. Previously, you couldn't do that. As of update 6.2, Tides of War progression in community games is now enabled. So this, for me, strikes off one of the several issues that community games had, and it takes the system a little bit closer to the place that it really needs to be to properly support communities that want to have a home in Battlefield 5. The system still needs persistent server instances that won't go away when the server empties, it needs more admin tools so that people can control the situation on their own server and it needs plenty of settings and modifiers to allow owners to really curate the experience that they want from Battlefield 5. Now DICE is still working on the community games feature and actually we are waiting for some sort of communication about what we're going to see next because as I said they are still developing it. The last we heard from the team was they felt it needed more work and they'd be back in the new year with more details. So we're now in March and we haven't heard anything yet. Let's hope it's not another tank body customization deal where it takes over 400 days for it to get to Battlefield 5. I hope it won't. I'm sure it won't, but I kind of like that communication. That'd be nice. Next, the coming soon tank body customization for the Sherman. That's now active as a reward in Battlefield 5 just for logging in. You can see it here. It's actually been renamed to Flagship and it comes with the Iwo Jima tank paint job as well. So all you have to do is log into Battlefield 5 and then go into the armory and it will pop up as unlocked for you. And interestingly, changing the paint underneath the turret and the chassis changes the paint on the wood panels on the side. And it also removes the coming soon text on the wood as well. That's unique to the Iwo Jima paint job. So the only way you can make that text appear is if you've got the Iwo Jima paint job on, which is a nice touch. Then I did mention the sniper rifle bullet velocity buffs in my video the other day, but my opinion on those, 
they've made sniper rifles very strong indeed. I will be making a video on this tomorrow or on Saturday, but essentially what DICE has done here is make sure your bullets hit their target without needing to lead as much at long range anymore, which is great for players who maybe struggle with aiming properly with sniper rifles or maybe players that are new to the game, but it does rather give skilled players a big boost to their kill to death ratio. So it's certainly a big buff for the sniper rifles. I'll leave it at that at the moment and I'll play with them some more and I'll make a video soon and give you my proper opinion on that. And then lastly, there has been an update to the Wake Island map that makes the fuel tanks explode rather massively. My friend Peter managed to capture it on a video here and you can actually see that the tanks spill out their fuel and they create this floor is lava meme in the containment area. No doubt this is going to be a new thing every single round on Wake Island now. How many people can you kill with the big explodey boy? So yeah, in my opinion, day one, update 6.2 is pretty decent. DICE has done a good job overall. There are a few bugs here and there, but really it wouldn't be a Battlefield 5 patch without them. <laughs> and thankfully, none of them really affect gameplay, which, which is great news. So we can just play the game and hopefully those bugs will get ironed out. Thanks very much for watching. Leave me a rating and a comment. It is much appreciated. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.